So welcome to the next in our online series of messages. This is part of the ministry of the Friends at Center Congregational Church in Linfield, Massachusetts. This is Reverend Tom, the pastor, hoping that these messages can help you in your journey of life. If you'd like to know more about Center Congregational Church, there'll be a little information for you at the end of this video. So thank you for spending time with us. So grace and peace to you from our friend Jesus. The great struggle of faith, indeed the great struggle of being a human being, is struggling for acceptance. Are we accepted? Can we accept ourselves as we are? Sometimes not. Can we accept other people as they are? Very often not. All of this sort of distills down to a big question. What's our relationship to our Creator God, this divine creative force of love in the universe? We have a relationship to that which is holy and sacred. What is it? And are we accepted? The Gospels wrestle with this approach, avoidance, this feeling accepted and then feeling rejected, condemned and perhaps judged sometimes in scriptural passages, other times embraced regardless of our sin or wrongdoing. So we struggle with this question, are we accepted? And in this, in this week's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, we have a parable. Jesus is telling a number of parables. This is towards the end of the Gospel of Matthew and is building to a crescendo. It has a lot to do with acceptance. Who is ushered into the kingdom of God? So he tells a story. Let's take a look at it. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, went to its field, and another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners, invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. It's really hard for us to think that God would reject us. But then, in my journey as a pastor, I find people feel constantly rejected by God because their expectations, their requests, or whatever it might be, seem to not have come to pass as they were tendered. And there's resentment. There's a sense of isolation. Really, that's at the core of this parable the idea that we actually isolate ourselves. We self-excommunicate ourselves by embracing that which we feel is more valuable than this religious stuff, this God stuff. We embrace all sorts of things. Look at the story. People are too busy to go to the wedding. Busy, busy, busy. People have places to go, things to see, people to go and engage with. It's, I have a life. I don't have time for this divine creative force of love in the universe that's knocking at my heart. And so out of default, eventually only the people that are just sort of hanging around are brought in. The ones that are too busy have gone off to do something else. But then now we have the rabble and the losers and just about anybody at the wedding feast. In the Gospel of Matthew, we get a sense that God's increased generosity includes everybody, or at least anybody who can be there. And so what the question is, is what keeps us from being there? 
we're really not there a lot of the time. We refuse this divine invitation because, well, we're just like I said, we've created a whole world to ourselves. And it's a world maybe of affluence, of comfort, of frustration, of neurosis, whatever it might be, but it's absent of room for the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts. How can we break that down? You see, people wonder sometimes, where is God in all this? And usually it's we who have moved, not the divine creative force of a loving presence that is always inviting us. We're just not always accepting the invitation because we built a world in defense of and independent of that God that we can call on. I, I'm not crazy about the word God, it's too loaded, but Yahweh is a better word, but people don't go around saying Yahweh very often. It's Hebrew for I am what I am. God is what God is. We can't sort of just hang out with God, but we certainly can have conversation and communion with Jesus Christ, who we call the son of this creative force, this presence in the universe, this redemptive creative force. So if we can give up what we made instead of God, and let's call that an idol, you see. The lectionary wisely turns to the story this week of the Israelites in the desert who make that golden calf because God seems absent and Moses has gone to the mountaintop and hasn't come back for a long time. And so what do they do? They end up making an idol. They can worship that. They can see that. But that becomes their thing, their transactional deal with deity. They brought it into their context. They've rejected God and God is unhappy in that story. Moses talks God down a bit and says, cool off, please. And he, God withdraws the idea that he had of destroying these people for their false worship. That's very Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we have remnants of rejection, don't we? This idea of going to the wedding feast, even, you're there more by accident than design. Are you able to participate? Well, Jesus is rather explicit about who's able to participate. You know, he says that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is this kingdom of heaven. Those people who don't have just a whole bunch of stuff in the way because they've lost it, it's been destroyed, maybe eradicated by addiction, pain, suffering, whatever it might be, those things cleared out of the way can make one's heart available to the true presence, the mystery of God's presence right now, in the here and now, which is always available. If we feel isolated from that, then we need to ask ourselves, where have we gone? Where are we now? So back at this wedding feast, there's a fellow who comes in there. It's interesting. He shows up and he just kind of got dragged in. And then the king comes in and he says, hey, where's your wedding garment? Where's your Where's your clothes you're supposed to wear? And the guy goes, huh? And he gets thrown out. What's going on there? That's like a little micro parable. It comes out of the Old Testament understanding that we're called to put God's mercy upon us like a garment, like a robe. If we're in the presence of the divine, we're to take that mercy on and wear it inside and out. And if we don't do that, then we get the exit door from our ability to be present to what the loving God intends. Now these stories are hard. You might say, well, there's not a lot of love there. There is as this Gospel of Matthew proceeds, and I suggest you read it as we go through it in the coming weeks in the lectionary. This taking somebody to task came to me, it's sort of a dressing down. Have you ever been dressed down, embarrassed in front of the crowd because you're deficient? I thought that was a funny way to understand it because the whole problem is the guy isn't dressed right. He's dressed down. 
Where does that come from? Doing my research, dressing down comes from the British Navy in the late 18th century when sails would become somewhat older and worn and they wouldn't hold the wind efficiently and so they were brought down and dressed with oil. That's the invitation. Most of us have been flopping in the breeze for a while. Maybe we're a little worn. It's time to get a renewal, to have that oil of blessing and mercy put over us. Can we take on what God intends for us in our life and be renewed thereby? And that beautiful image of a sail filling with wind is really what the New Testament often refers to as us being filled with the Holy Spirit, where, as the old King James says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. If we don't have our sails up there, we can't go where God is sending us. We will be back on the shore, grumbling, having excommunicated ourselves from the party of celebration and blessing. So the journey is to get on board and go with God. That's my invitation. And anything that's in the way of that in your life, I suggest you take a look at. Have you built some walls to the divine? Have you decided to make your life a practical material experience rather than a deepening one that can be called more spiritual, more of the mystery of eternity and God's eternal grace? So that's the invitation. In Christ's name. Amen. So thank you for spending time with us again. If you'd like to know more about Center Congregational Church, you can go online at center-church.org. You can call us at 781-334-3050 or email us at the address above. Peace and best wishes. Goodbye.